When I was 14 years old, I kind of knew already what I wanted to do uh, because I grew up on a farm, so we had a lot of exposure to wildlife and my dad was into hunting and fishing. And we would always look forward to his moose stories in the evenings and hear how things went. So I think it's because of him that I was kind of directed into that, um, that field. So I started taxidermy at the age of 14. I wasn't really that good at it, but uh, that's kind of a natural progression when you're a farm kid usually is you're exposed to wildlife and nature and, and you observe different species and, and then taxidermy piques an interest and you want to mount these things in a natural position and, and make them look real. I am creating three pieces for the Courtney Museum. One is a uh, Pacific ratfish, uh, another one is a vampire squid, and a flapjack devilfish. I have an existing mold for the ratfish, and from the mold, it's a two-piece mold, so I put a mold release inside it, and then we use resin and uh, automotive bondo to make a, a little bit of a slurry brush it inside the mold, reinforce it with fiberglass, and I use a different material for the fins. We clamp the mold together and wait usually overnight and pull it out. Then you have to pull the cast out and clean it up and fin is a separate, the fins are a separate mold, so you gotta make the fins and then you attach them all onto the body and sand them and wash it and then prime it and then get ready for painting. The eyes are very unique on the ratfish. They are quite large and they have a very uh, green, reflective uh, surface to them. So it's a, it's a very unique eye. Okay, this is the mold for the ratfish. So it's a two-piece two mold. And uh, clamp it up and you pop out the replica. Here are the, here's the fin mold, the pictorial fins, which are the ones in the front. They're like uh, wings on an airplane. They stick straight out from the side. And here is the ratfish in process. And it's a male, it's got this uh, protrusion with little teeth on it actually clamps that onto the female's pelvic fin so she doesn't get away and it's got a poison spine and I've I can say firsthand that it hurts because I had a thumb poke on here and my skin peeled for weeks actually I make my own eyes so the ratfish has a very reflective green eye so to achieve that I spray paint the back green on top of a clear casting resin on a commercial lens and I put a foil on the back so it gives that reflective surface. Uh, the vampire squid, I borrowed the mold from the BC Museum. I used a different material for that, it's called uh, castol urethane. So it's a two, two component mixture and you mix it together and it, it chemical reaction and it turns into plastic. And again, I have to make the eyes because they're a certain size and, and color. And vampire squid, usually it's a red or a blue reflection when the, the lights hit it under in that deep abyss. And the vampire squid, I have to cut out the pieces of skin between the tentacles and I'm replacing them with a uh, semi-transparent material so it looks more like a fleshy surface. And then they have the like flippers, those will go on here. Uh, the LEDs will be going on each tentacle and this is called the false eye. So when it approaches a a predator approaches the vampire squid as a defense mechanism its eyes will actually turn on and then they'll shrink so it looks like it's swimming away but it's actually right in front of say a blue shark so if it's ever bitten on this part there's no problem because uh, it's not life-threatening and um, I'll have the eyes with the LED flat dimming and brightening as well as the tentacles so it shows the bioluminescence of this species and this is a uh, the way I made the tentacles, uh, just pop this one out because I haven't pulled that one out yet. And then you have the suction cups and the 
the, the other parts to it. And then I will grind this out and put the fiber optic underneath this so you'll be able to see it flash and kind of get diffused. The flapjack double fish is also known as a pancake octopus because it's just, when it lays on the floor of the ocean, it just lays flat. And that's a mold from the BC Museum as well. And uh, I will modify it by using transparent materials and layer it and put colors between because it's more gelatinous. And then we have the flapjack devil fish. It's just really uh, a little blob. And, and the unique thing about this octopus, it, it has the, the ear flaps, so it can propel itself with this. And uh, unlike other octopus, of course, uh, just being not as mobile. The, the membranes almost go to the end of the tentacles, so there's not a lot of separation between them. Generally, I have to attach some kind of hardware to the specimen so they can display them at the museum. Uh, sometimes they'll be from the belly, so it's a 360 view or uh, just view one-sided. These ones are 360, so I'll put a, a rod in the bottom of it. And uh, they're usually high glossed, uh, but in museum situations, uh, semi-gloss is better because there's hot spots from lights. And I'll just wrap them up in bubble wrap and um, curry them over to Courtney.